Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to, back to, back to, back to the future, the game, part five, the finale, where this is the final episode of Back to the Future, the game. I'm glad because I finally get to see how the story wrap up, wraps up, but I'm sad a little bit because that means there's no more Back to the Future, the game. And I, I'm kind of digging the whole, uh, the, the story a bit, and, um how things are going on. So, uh, let's just dive right into this, because I'm impatient. In the last episode of Back to the Future, the game, um, sorry, I think I just fell off camera. I don't know, I can't see myself. When I'm recording my games, I can't see myself. But, uh, um, in the last episode, we ruined uh, Emmett's relationship with Edna, and old Doc, well, old Doc from Timeline B, or, am, I, am I confusing you yet? Um, is, uh, I think he's on the path to fucking shit up for me, and that's the only way I can describe that. Why is there two tannin plaques up there? Hey, hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Uh, uh, Emmett, uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. <laughs> you let me sleep in, stay right there. You should make peace with your dad. I'm not gonna be a peacemaker just yet. You let me sleep in? The Why fuck is wrong up? with you? I tried to give you a nudge before I left, but you were practically comatose. How long has it been since you slept? Aside from being knocked unconscious, I'm not really sure. Anyway, no. I left you back at the lab to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh... I see it. I think I see it. It's that thing with the spiral going. over it. Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Okay. Yeah, today it was a rainy day, all damn day, and they're calling for possible thunderstorm tonight. So I kind of want to get this game out of the way. Ooh. Jeez, Doc. Watch out. You almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Uh, did you fix the time circuits? So, how are the time circuits? Still broken. I've got a few ideas, but I'm occupied with other problems today. So, is that what I'm destined to build for the expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was Whoa. science! Um... But science means everything to you. You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science. But if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Another path? Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father no. always wanted. 
As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be no, happy. No, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. You can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure. Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Whoa. Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? Grab Emmett's static accumulator. Oh, come on. Here, little static thingy. How the hell is it doing that? Can't reach it. Bedlam at Brown divorce hearing. What? Bedlam at Brown divorce hearing. Wife takes pot shot at a strange tubby, famed industrialist Emmett Brown. I don't believe it. He's still fated to marry her. Wow. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. It was right in your hand. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Gotcha. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, you can fly. <laughs> McFly? Yeah, stupid jokes happen to come out. It's, it's really late. Um, I had a couple more videos I wanted to do. Nay, needed to do. Well, wanted to do. And I still had some uh, last minute things to do around here. So when I got all done with all my stuff, I can go ahead and play my last game. And it turns out it's really late. Luckily, I'm the only one home tonight, so... I can be as loud as I want! Sorry about your ears. The is coming today. There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic, futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There's a world Enlightenment under the sea instead of enchantment under the sea. Because the future is coming today. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind loophole. of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. The future is coming to <laughs> Find Emmett's booth and deliver the static accumulator. Emmett! Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. I'm sorry, uh, what's your name? Insert ticket to enter. You are going to need a ticket. You're going to need a ticket. Me, Jacques Duteau? Famous diver. Well, Jacques. Excuse me, Mr. Duto. Jacques Duto, at your service. Um, who are you? Jacques Duto, famous diver. So you're some kind of celebrity? I do not like to brag, but uh, I have a small following here. Yeah. Must be tough being I guess famous. People are always bugging you for autographs, huh? Asking you to tell them stories about your adventures and stuff. It gets a bit old, but I can always retreat to the depths. The fish are much less uh, uh, demanding. Right. 
Well, uh, I'm not gonna worry about getting a ride yet. I gotta find, uh, Emmett's thing. Phone and boots, here he comes, there. right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you Don't mustn't know. let your resolution waver. Hello, Corleone. Um... Where's Emmett? What? Is he missing? Don't you recognize a ploy when you see one? Now, you do your duty. Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. Um, you broke up with him. Um, Emmett chose his own path. The electrokinetic levitator was Emmett's idea. I just helped. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Michael Corleone really is, and where, where he comes from. Where do I come There's from? something you want to tell me, Michael? Am I from space? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Smirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Eddie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? <laughs> Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I Yakov. really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. Thank you. She's been getting some clout in town ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. Why? The chief reads her column religiously. Uh... Oh, let her do what she says. She's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. So... Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well, oh. I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh, Why do I always gotta dig in everybody else's dirty laundry? You haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Alright. Okay. So now I'm a guy named Yakov Smirnov. Hey, Trixie! Hi, Trixie. That's Techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now, what can I do you for? Um... Edna's got, uh... Emmett's Edna booth Strickland shut down. is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Can you postpone his demo? Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster, and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but... It looks uh, like he's last on the list anyway. Go on pretty soon. We might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't. Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. Um... Where's Emmett? Have you seen Emmett around? I'm kinda worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah. He wandered down that way a little while ago. He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Or something. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Uh... 
How'd you get the job back? Artie told me how you managed to get your old job back. He did? But it was supposed to be a secret. There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, from your point of view. He didn't tell you anything. Wow, she's quick. Um... Come, Come on, on, how'd Trixie? you get the job I'm back? All, you, the all, job all back. them out there want to know. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. Fair enough, fair enough. Sorry, I tried. Um, help me get Emmett's booth open. Is there open. anything you can do uh, to get Emmett's booth open again? Uh, I wish there was, but I'm just a muse. All we can do is inspire people. Could you inspire someone to open up the booth? Inspire me, Muse! Okay, you're a Muse. Can you inspire me an idea? I'll try. Well? Maybe it doesn't take effect right away. Wow. Um, tell me about the attractions. So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the Glass House, the Future Furnishings, and of course, Enlightenment Under the Sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself. Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. How do I get tickets? How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here, yeah, you're kind of like family. I love you. Know? Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, time to. Well, when's it scheduled? What time for? is Emmett supposed to go on? Let's see. Eight kilobeats past fifty. What? We're on metric time here at the Hill Valley Expo. Bye, Trixie. Thanks. Uh, Happy to news, help. Whatever the fuck your name is. Stop Edna from interfering. Are you ready for picture radio? Are you ready for a picture radio? Wonder if that's anything like MTV. Not quite. Well, that's a cartoon. Potted plant. A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's <laughs> got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tannen's speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Why do I get the feeling that's gonna play a role? Now, where? Well, speak of the devil. I'm just looking at attractions. Electro bitch. Piss pacifier. Off. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. Yeah, my my little perspective of that is a woman is not a bitch. If she's acting like a bitch, then I call her a bitch. Just like a guy. A guy is just a guy until he starts acting like an asshole and then he's an asshole. That's how I... That's how I, uh... Categorize Annie, can people. I talk to Edna for a minute? Be my guest. I'd like a couple minutes of quiet. Ah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's this about? Um... Where's Carl Sagan? Have you seen Mr. Sagan around here anywhere? No, and I wouldn't tell you if I had. He's more than a little scared of your anarchistic tendencies. Um... Yeah, but you broke up with Emma. I mentioned that before. Why are you still involved in Emmett's life? I thought you broke up with him. I did, but then your friend Mr. Sagan told me about your scheme to interfere with our romance. Not a very nice thing to do, Comrade Shmirnov. Where's Emmett? What you do with Emmett, Edna? What are you talking about? You're the one who's trying to ruin his life. Believe it or not, I'm the one trying to save it. From what? From you, mostly. <laughs> no, I, wow! You must know where Emmett is. You really don't know where Emmett is? I haven't the foggiest. If he's smart, he's run far away from whatever dangerous shenanigans you yeah, talked him into shit perpetrating out of her. today. Shenanigans? And Trixie's back in the saddle. 
Did you see? I just want to be an asshole. Trotter got her old job back. Oh, I know. I tried to have it out with Arthur McFly, but he refuses to explain himself. Apparently, he discovered some sort of loophole that allows that Canadian to retain her position. Well, the Ladies' Decency Society shall hear about this. Make no mistake. Oh, God, I really don't like you. I really don't like this woman. I don't even want to talk to her anymore. Okay, this is pointless. I've got to find Emmett. Stay away from him, you anarchist hooligan. Hooligans! Hooligans! <laughs> Sorry, cat. Um. What are? Ooh. Convention look. special: two free algae cakes with every visit. How about Hostile an algae guy? cake? Sure thing, Mister. Wait a minute. You're the guy that makes the algae cakes? What? I thought you couldn't stand them. Hey. You're the guy that tried to pick up on my unit. <laughs> oh, for the love of <laughs> no algae cakes for you, Buster. I don't want any. Okay, Mr. Jacques. Mr. Duto. Okay, oui. Duto. Oui. Have you seen Emmett Brown? I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish brown hair. A uh, distracted look. That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were added into the house of black. Great, thanks. Awesome. You're an okay dude. Glass. Oh, that's a future furnishing. Ooh, ooh, okay. Hey, Emmett, come out of there. Don't listen to him. Knock on the glass. Perfect. Is it? Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him. He, he's crazy. I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas glass. Unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in. Or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. Right. So I should be able to just open this? Okay. Is it because... oh. confused <laughs> okay that's another wall okay so can I what did that have to do with that? Try this one. No. Okay. Um, is this blocking that? What's in here? Um. Will this open freely now? Things blocking it. Yeah, so is it upstairs? Well let's let's go in here. Let's let's check this one out. I'm
That wasn't what was blocking it, was it? It won't slide open. All right, so. So if I close this... It's definitely a puzzle that doesn't, uh... make a whole lot of sense to me. Now it's open. So, was the thing upstairs? that ether Entertainment center, potted plant. Let's check out the entertainment center. A fully equipped home entertainment center. So, where's the ColecoVision? <laughs> What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. But I was wondering. Have you seen Emmett lately? Did Emmett come through here with Carl Sagan? I saw them come out of the future furnishings exhibit not too long ago. But no, they didn't leave the hall. Okay, so they're still here. Um, can we delay Emmett's demo? Is there any way you can delay Emmett's demo? He ran into some last minute turbulence. Emmett's already pushed his luck by substituting this electrokinetic whatsis for the mental alignment meter he was supposed to be showing. I can't alter his place on the roster, too. The board would get the idea I was showing favoritism. Got it, got it, got it. Um, can you get his booth back open? Edna Strickland got Officer Parker to close Emmett's booth down. What? Why? She claims his invention is dangerous. Is it? That's not the point. <laughs> you must be able to get Emmett's booth open. Is there anything you could do to get Emmett's booth reopened? I am afraid not. This may be a wondrous land of tomorrow, but it's still within the jurisdiction of the Hill Valley Police Force. Maybe you should talk to Officer Parker. He says there's nothing he can do as long as Edna's got clout in Hill Valley. She does have that. All right. Take care, dude. See you around. Algae cakes! Miracle food from the swamp land! Get your algae cakes! Hey, hey, excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a tall, thin, older gentleman. 
He might have been with a tall, thin, younger gentleman. I know just who you're talking about. Hey, just left about a minute ago. If you hurry, you might catch that. Why is his voice different? Take off your helmet. I prefer to leave it on. And the inland air is difficult on my sinus hands. Hmm. I know you're in there, Doc. Doc? Yes, I am a doctor of marine biology. But I fail to understand what you're... Quit fooling around, Doc. What have you done with them? Stop! Them? Help! I'm being attacked! Michael! What are you doing? You can't assault the exhibitors. You don't understand. He's kidnapped Emmett. The boy is obviously uh, confusing. I'll say he is. Wow. I want I should Dude. toss him out on his ear. That won't be necessary. Do you know who that is? That's Jacques Duteau of the Oceanic Institute. No, it's not. Where's it's... Jacques Duteau, though? Please keep it down. The if Doc's in there, where's... The a lot of trouble and expense to secure Professor Duteau. We can't afford to antagonize him. But if you've got a complaint against him, we can straighten it out after the show. But if you make another scene like that, I'm afraid I'm going to have you expelled from the hall. Well. Professor Duteau. Professor Duteau, huh? At your service. Hmm. Where, yeah, where's the real Duteau? What have you done with the real Professor Duteau? I'm not sure I like your insinuations. I'm not sure I like you kidnapping Emmett. Perhaps I should call the authorities and have you removed from the hall. You're a cold-blooded guy, Duteau. Say la vie. What'd you do with Emmett? Where'd you stash Emmett? In the diving bell? It's called a battlefield. Aha! So Emmett is in the bathosphere. I don't know what you're talking about. Let me look in the bath bathosphere. I think I'm gonna take a closer look at that bathosphere. Not without a ticket, I'm afraid, of, sir. I've got tickets. Is this guy trying to bum a free ride? No. See that you don't. Feels good to be on the right side of the law. <laughs> Raise the bathosphere. Take a ride in a bathosphere. Your bathosphere. I'd like to see the inside of it. Can't get in without a ticket, I'm afraid. Okay. I'm not gonna ticket. get away with this, you know. As they say in my country. Okay, sera, sera. Mm -hmm. Here's my ticket. I want to see inside that bathosphere. I don't think so. What do you mean? I've got a ticket. You have to honor my ticket. It's uh, uh, the, the, the wrong kind of ticket. Sorry. Now oh, give me a break. Um. Try again. I, I don't know. You've got to take my ticket and let me into the bathosphere. It's the rules. If you've got a problem, go lodge a complaint. I'm going to. Yeah, I'm gonna go over and talk to, uh, Artie. Hey, Artie. Uh, aquarium guy won't take my ticket. This ticket should get me into any exhibit on the floor, right? Sure, that's a pee ticket. Well, the guy at the aquarium is refusing to honor it. Hmm, there must be some mistake. Come on, let's straighten this out. Yes, let's. Professor Duteau, this young man claims you refuse to take his ticket. Not at all. I'm only too happy to take his ticket. Please, climb the ladder, and I will raise the bathroom for you. My dear, what is the matter? The gears. They must have become stuck. I am afraid I cannot raise the bathosphere at this moment. What a shame. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Well, I will work on that problem. 
Perhaps you should come back later. Bullshit. Come down, please. The bathosphere exhibit is currently closed for repair. Bathosphere host. Oh, wait. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in pond scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot. Thanks, Trixie. Uh, uh, technique. I I'm truly honored to be here today among all you pointy headed type people. Like the ladies. Shut up! I think you're in the field of pond scum. Algae, ladies and gentlemen. What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? <laughs> I didn't know it would do that. Oh, oh, sorry. I believe I have unlocked the secrets of this noble vegetable. And I am here to present my discoveries to our desolating wild. It does if there's somebody inside the bathosphere, but I thought you said there wasn't anybody in the bathosphere. Yes. not. So if I just stand here, I command you on the boards. No, funny. You'd think it was you who was running out of air, not the guy in the bathosphere. I, I thought the whole. What you're talking about? It's as if you two were connected somehow. There's three ends and connected folks. No, nope. raise the bathosphere, Doc. I won't do it. Then neither will I. <laughs> Mexican standoff. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very interesting. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon. Is he finally caving? So for all the years that they have become unstuck. There, see? It was just a malfunction after all. Spills him. Let's get you out of there. Uh, Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Told you. He's gone. Hey, you. Hey, you. Hey, he just took that guy's wallet. I think he took his wallet. Really? Oh, remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now, you'd better get back to your booth Funny before thing is. I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush. I never got the details. Mm. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where did he go? You know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. No, <laughs> oh, I know how that is. <laughs> What's this? Oh, yeah, Edna made Detective Parker shut down your booth. He says he can't go against her. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Unless we dig up some dirt that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. So that's what we'll do. Stop Edna from interfering with Emma's administration. Phone booth of the future. Greetings, forward thing. Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. Wow, okay. So I'm supposed to call this phone booth. 
That's why I hesitated there. Why would I need to call the phone booth? Hiya, folks. Hiya, folks. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure this out. Oh, hello, Smirnoff. Do you know what she made him do? Yeah. Yeah, come here. Um, we got to discredit Edna. We got to discredit Edna. Edna made Parker close your booth down. I know that. So he'll only open it up again if we could find a way to discredit her. Do you know anything that'll ruin Edna's standing in town? Yes, I do. She is a rotten kisser! Oh. <laughs> I love it! what I had in mind. <laughs> That's funny, though. Um, has Santa told you, told you what Listen, he... if Carl Sagan shows oh, up I again, didn't... you're not going to let him lead you away, are you? Are you kidding? My sole concern now is to get back up to my electrokinetic levitator. Good man. Somehow I went to click this one and it went up there. Edna that. never confessed anything to you, did she? Like what? Something incriminating. Like, for instance, her being the speakeasy arsonist. Edna, the speakeasy arsonist? Then again, why not? But she never said anything about it to you? No. Hmm. I gotta run. Did you talk some sense into those two? Oh, a Sisyphean task if ever there was one. The plant. Am I supposed to put the plant in the phone booth? Call the phone booth, talk to Edna. I don't know. That's can I even take the plant? Don't walk off with the recording plant. It's the only one I got. Sorry. There's another plant just like it in the uh, the house Hi of the future. You can take that plant and swap it out. doesn't belong here there's nothing futuristic about it what is this console anyway red button green button blue button what does the red button do in the house of the future fresh fruit baskets will be replenished daily by ah, they had that in the second movie that's helicopter. funny Tracks. From the ceiling fan. What does the green button do? In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed. There's a the telephone. The personal phone helmet. Hey! Please recite the phone number you wish to dial. Or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Oh, I don't have to remember the phone number. It's already there. But what? I don't want to call it yet. That is not a recognized option. Please recite the phone number you wish to dial or say hang up to terminate your phone helmet experience. Hang up. Conversation terminated. The What's next the... Oh. exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that oh, our boys I... in blue will soon have at their disposal. 
I gotta try and get that plant. Truly met his match today, Officer Parker. Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? It was something they told us as kids. I mean, when, uh, I heard round of applause just everybody applaud, but it's like, uh, or everybody smashes their hands together. But, uh, when, um, when I went to school and they said round of applause, you had to clap like this. Stupid. Alright, take that plant, replace it with this one. Looks just like it. What? Why? <laughs> nice. Now, can I put this plant in here? If it lets me do this, I'm at least no at least know I'm onto something. Okay, call me a snoop. I'm onto something. Yeah, that's well hidden. Now... Welcome to the world of I don't know what to do from here on, so this is going to be interesting. Push the green button. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Techni News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? Um. Hi, Trixie. It's me, Michael. Oh, hi. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I was just checking out this snazzy phone. Okay, bye. Bye. Should have said I was Carl Sagan. Well, actually, I really didn't get a chance to pick. I, the, the game stopped, and I knew I had to click back into it, and when I clicked back into it, it just jumped to that option. Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Phone booth of the future. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, tech me speaking. Who's this? Carl Sagan. This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? I want to talk to Edna. Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. <laughs> Mr. Sagan? What happened? I thought you were distracting Emmett. I was? Oh, yes, of course I was. Then why is Emmett standing here valiantly trying to convince Detective Parker that he should be allowed to go through with this ever-so-dangerous display of wrong-headed technology? What can I say? I was outsmarted by that wily Yakov Smirnoff. Well, that puts a crimp in our plan. Yes, yes, our plan. Yeah, about, about that plan. Tell me about our plan. Where's Emmett lay off Yakov Smirnoff for a dark secret? Um... First things first, first, the secret. We gotta get his boots Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. 
You're still sore about going to jail. Uh. That was the Dodd's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away. And I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night Got they her. open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women flaunting their depravity to the world. And the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking, rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Wow. Uh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakers. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Holy shit. Hiya, folks. It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress. Gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit? Hey, folks? If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future. Right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. you like to place a call? No, I yes. want to pick up the... I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts... It's funny, I clicked the recording call. device and he walked into the booth. Recording device. There we go. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. Sorry. Hey, Danny! Oh. Hello. Excuse me. Marty! Michael! Smirnoff! Um, I just <laughs> Marty, want to talk Marty, Michael, to Um. Got some dirt on Edna. You know how you said you'd defy Edna if I could dig up some dirt on her? Yeah? You got some? She's the speakeasy arsonist. Edna's the speakeasy arsonist. That's an interesting theory. It's the truth. I heard her confess. Well, I didn't hear it, so I'm afraid it's your word against hers. And well, no pull offense, out the plant. Her word carries a little more weight You're around make here than yours does. The Thanks. I'll be back. Well, I hope so. You've got to get this albatross off my neck. Well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Hello. Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? I'm busy trying to keep Emmett from letting you lead him into the biggest mistake of his life. Mistake? My biggest mistake was... This will only take a minute. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Shh, listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Edna? You're the arsonist? D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Emmett? You're on your own, darling. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? Seriously? Mm -hmm. One of these days, I should really stop falling for that. You think? Not to sound callous, but does this mean I can demonstrate my invention? Let's take that as a yes. 
Greetings and salutations to all our honored I guests. did it! I am taking the news <laughs> of progress. And it is my pleasant task once again to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. Great. Come on, let's get up there. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. Then it looks like all systems are goals. Wish me luck. Don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown! Objection! Objection, Your Honor! I hereby demand that the scientific demonstration of one Emmett Lethra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity! I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father! Well. Where is he? Hand him over this instant! Uh, the longer you hold out, the harder it's Reconcile Emmett and Judge Brown. Why do... Why me? <sighs> alright, alright. Emmett. Don't give me away. <sighs> Don't let him bully I you. I thought you weren't scared of your father anymore. When he's in a mood like this, I'd have to be suicidal not to be scared. Um... Let me talk to him. You can't hide from justice! <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? You're making a scene? Come on, mister. Uh, judge, sir. You're kind of making a scene here. Wrong. I am stopping my son from making a scene here. Don't antagonize him. Shut up, Emmett. Well, if you're not going to say anything... There you go. So he is up there with you. Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second. This second? Um... I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Uh, what's your plan? He's got to give you a fair trial. He's got to give you a fair Maybe trial. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. I don't think the foreign... It's not got to be freaking mediator. To speak to my son. Emmett's not ready to talk to you uh, directly. Oh, I suppose you're his mouthpiece. I guess so. Yeah. Um, his mind's made up. You're intimidating him. He says you won't listen. Can't this way? He says you won't listen. He says it's no use talking to you. Y you never listen. That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Um, he promised? He promised he'd listen to you? You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot. What, what have you got to lose? Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing oh. about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like well, to be young. You don't know what it's Stop like with this! Their ambitions are so great and so powerful that they've got a life of their own. You. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they've got a bond where they must. This is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Wow. Whoa, we talked. 
Are you happy? <sighs> okay, you came off like a freaking madman, Em. to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna? <laughs> Oh, man. Can't be, but Dem, why not? He's just worried about you hurting yourself. No amount of physical pain could equal the pain he's already inflicted to my spirit. His bark is worse than his bite. Might seem impossible, but it's not. I don't not. know. I think you two are on the verge of a breakthrough. Okay, his bark is worse than his bite. Okay, so he's got a strong personality. Strong personality. Lord save us from strong fathers. Why couldn't I have been born to a nice, wimpy milk toast? What? Yeah, well, that's no picnic either. The important thing is, fathers can change. Says you. Ugh. Please, you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. Um. It's important See, to Emmett. See, Your Honor, it's just that this demo is so important to Emmett. <laughs> a childish kerfuffle. He'll forget all about it in two weeks' time. That's what I'm afraid of. Uh. Not like it's other people. just stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. Okay. Yeah. But if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kinda good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. <laughs> wow. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? He put a lot he put a lot of heart in it. He didn't put a lot of time in it, but he put a lot of heart in it. Ah. Uh. Even if it's a failure, it'll be a successful failure. So success, yes. Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe. Maybe not. But even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it. There are no more mistakes. Ooh, oh, yeah. Well, he's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language. There's only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me. And I made out all right, too. How did your dad very... feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a Disobedient little. Your father didn't understand you either. So your father didn't approve of you coming to America. Well, Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to. Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Em. Emmett. Uh, he says you're like he your says mother. you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like. Oh, skip it. Would you say? You were starting to say that you're like. Skip it. Can it be that you and your dad? No, next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride, okay, I, I get it. And so does he, but what's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. 
Sometimes it's, well, even the more, more you than know. you realize. May I come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I'm here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Oh. It's so beautiful! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see the force field generated by the static accumulator. Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Trixie! Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for technique. bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator. Is that Edna in the frickin' DeLorean? Uh, are you okay? I thought I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before... No, don't come any closer. Stop. Go away! But... Move! Move! Party! Shit. Oh my god, Doc! Say something. Say something Call I'm me. giving up. I I am you. you knew that was coming. Iridium and titanium. Okay, I'll get help. Newspaper. What? You mean? Yeah. Key to the city. I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh, I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Come back. No doc. No DeLorean. Doc? Marty, have you been out here the whole time? Mm. Damn it. Sure of it. Is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is quite havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force. 
one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great Scott, that's it! What about your... What about your failed dome? And you're, you're not discouraged? Discouraged? By what? You mean what happened in there? Oh, that was a learning experience. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no. Uh, nonchalant. No, nothing's wrong. I'm, I'm fine. You don't sound fine. Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. Not exactly. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here... But there's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask any... What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. I don't think so. You wouldn't understand. Oh, yeah? Try me. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? Guarantee it. So what now, Marty? You lived out your life in 1931? Explain. Hey, it worked. I need a lot more explanation. So, you were the same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. You used to be much shorter. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. <laughs> Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever. But what are you doing in 1931? Um... I came to rescue you. I came to rescue you. Teenage me? No, you, you. But then teenage you got mixed up in it. See, you were in jail and... Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... He waited 55 years to open that piece of paper? Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. Fly? You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? You married Trixie? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his pop on the nose grave. Wow. 
So that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was great grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. <laughs> Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Third movie. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of that car. What if Trixie's real name is Sylvia? Great. And Trixie's just a stage name. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me. Did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Mm. Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait. Edna Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it. It made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys, you mind telling me what the hell you're... What? Uh oh. Whoa. The whole fucking town just disappeared. Wow. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. How? Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Hayesville. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. Um... Where's Hill Valley? We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it? A hill or a valley? <laughs> no, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. Um... What happened to Hill Valley? What happened to Hill Valley? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then, whatever it was, it must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but he got run off by Scary Mary. Scary, Scary Mary? Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. Say, if there's anybody who can tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. Can you direct us to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. Why won't she talk? Why wouldn't she talk to us? The thing of it is, guys, Mary's older than dirt, but she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. Titched. She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite, please. We gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got the notion I'm gonna be chicken myself for sending you up there. <laughs> okay. Scary Mary. Mary, Mary, why a buggin? Beware of cat. 
Mary Pickford. Mary Pickford. That's Edna. I bet you that's Edna. That's got to be Edna. That's a DeLorean. Oh, man. I got to tell you, the saddest part of all the movies for me was, spoilers, the third movie when uh, the train came and disintegrated the damn DeLorean. That, uh... That for me was heartbreaking because I, I grew to love that damn car. Wipe your feet. Win window. Okay. Knock on the door. <laughs> for intruding, madam. We were wondering if you could tell us... I don't talk to hooligans! On a very friendly sort. That, that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Impossible. This is how she was when I first met her. I had to... Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, you think you know how to handle her. Just remember, we need to know what happened to Hill Valley, and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. Okay, hey, hey Ed, Ed, Edna, or Mary Pickford, or whatever the... She's gone. Hey, Miss Strick, who are you? I'm Michael Corleone. Michael Corleone. That's a foolish name. And I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. But we're not strangers. How do I know you? Um. I saved your life once. I saved your life once, a long time ago, remember? Kid Tannen had you tied up. Listen, Sonny. I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is, I never, ever talk about the past! Or the future, neither. I don't talk about any day but today. I guess that didn't go so well. Of course she doesn't talk about the past. Because there's something in her past she's trying to forget. But we're gonna pry it out of her. Go ahead, knock on the door again. I didn't knock the first time. What? It's me again, your old friend. How do I know you? Um... We, we did. We spent today together. We spent the day together. We did? Where? At the expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. Something funny about that date. Well, what are you here for? Um... I brought something for you. I brought something for you. What is it? Let me see. Um, Doc. I brought you him. Him? Who oh, him? Him who? It's Emmett Brown. Look hard. Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend. My boyfriend? Yeah, he's, um, he's all grown up. Come closer, fella. Marty, what am I supposed to do? Trust me, Doc. Just go with it. It can't be. Emmett. Yes, Edna. 
It's me. It is. It's October 13th, 1931. Oh, and you are Emmett. <gasps> Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. Hmm. Wow. Darling, you've come back. Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly quarrel. I've already forgotten about last night's little tip. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? Oh, oh dear. Schnookums. I don't know. Schnookums. No homes. <laughs> you're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic what's this? Um Okay. <laughs> okay. I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh! What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. Um. I hate to see it like this. Okay. Next outhouse. Cactus. Cactus. Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. This hat doesn't frame her face very well. And the cactus. Nice fit. Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. Here's something that'll make you remember. Remember what? I don't like to remember. Who are you? What are you doing in my yard, you hooligan? No, Edna. No yard. What? This is Emmett speaking. It's October 13th, 1931. Yes. And something's about to happen. Oh, yes, something big. But what? Better not talk to her directly. It'll break the spell. Who's there? 
please, Mom. Don't interrupt mm. the trance. I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. I'm guessing this mop doesn't get much use. The top of a mop. I could flop it on a cop. I could swap it for a top. I can... I think I'll stop. here Danny don't talk to him I won't have you spreading stories about me okay I am st I help me figure something out yes um You know, I've been dealing with Edna Strickland a lot lately, and I've seen her old and I've seen her young, but I've never seen her so... That shit crazy. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't know if... I don't I'll know. figure something out. I'm sure you will. Alright, I'm gonna have to start clicking on shit because I, I, don't, I have no idea what to do. Saloon sign? An old saloon sign. Cool. Why did I pick that Too up? Too bad it's all burnt. Um, burned out DeLorean. Oh, house. Yeah, I can wait. I wonder what's cooking. Why did I pick up the saloon sign? It's an sign? old saloon sign. Looks like it's been through a few bar fights. Nah. Nah. Talk about a watering hole. Edna's grandfather, Marshall Strickland. That's the same picture I saw in Edna's apartment way back in the future. Hmm. Help me out here, Danny. Don't talk to him. I won't have you spreading stories about me. If I play the recording to the cactus. I don't think so. Play it for Edna. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those stickies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. No! Turn it off, you imbecile! If Parker hears that, he'll... Officer, I can explain. It was a trick. I was framed. Oh, he's after me! He'll never catch me in this souped-up car of the future! Curses! I can't shake him! Well, no use in holding back now! 
Let's see what this baby can do. And here it comes. Yes? Here what comes? I, uh, I, I don't know. Something really unexpected is supposed to happen right about now, but I'm not sure what. Oh, come Flashing of lights. The, How can uh, I be I'm... expecting something unexpected? Uh, oh. I got an idea. What's going I got an on? idea. Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. Shut up, I got an idea. Here they come! The lights! I'm being transported! Where? Back! Back! To the past! What do you see? Hill Valley! But it's all different. It's so small and primitive. Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as life! Marshal James Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, shot by... I know, Doc. We met him in 1885. Remember? No! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter! I'm not even sure it is a man! This is all very confusing. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids! Better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland quick. You've got to bring this story to a climax. Oh, Grandfather, how well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Tell me. It's a bit rustic, to be sure, but all the buildings are so sturdy and well-kept, and the young people of Hill Valley, they're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century, and I know the reason why. Why? They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? This big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer got a lot to the valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... Tannen. Tannen. Yes! Good guess. Look at Acting like a big shot. Throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony! And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. Good move He's going to there. put up a... A... A what? I don't know. It's something I don't like. Something... Evil. A saloon? In Hill Valley? He can't do wow, that! Okay. Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... conclusive. Burn it down. Clay oven. Should I hand it to Edna or should I burn down the... I'll hand it to Edna. Young man, you've just given me an idea. First, we'll need some kerosene. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now, watch. This is beautiful. The devil's envy were consumed by the fires of righteousness. <laughs> You sucker! Burn! Wow. Was passionate when we were dating. Oh. What is it? Is it the fire? No, no, 
away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in Hill Valley. My intentions were pure. She burnt the town it down. It happened like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're a hooligan. <laughs> I'm a I'm a hooligan. <laughs> I fucking love it. Oh my god. Well, we have a date. Well, we have a year. Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed my fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Oh, 1876? Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story. Am I, Mr. Sagan? Oh, oh, you oh. You set me up for a fall. You and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, invested. I hereby sentence you two criminals hey. to... You! Nah. How much have you heard? Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged. Bye. Wow. Monday, July 17th, 1876. Wow, we're going way back. There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. Hmm. Better not get too close. Um. I think I liked it better on the outhouse door. It's this way. Oh, I can't go that way. All right. There's nothing there. Better not get too close. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. get too close so how am I gonna get past him whoa Mr. Sagan, what are you doing here? I was gonna ask you the same question, Miss Pickford. Isn't it obvious? I'm putting an end to your den of iniquity before it starts. I don't think so, Mary. I don't like shooting women, but no one comes between Beauregard B. Tannen and his livelihood. Tannen, stop! If you shoot her, she'll drop the torch, and this whole place will burn up. Edna, stop! 
If you drop that torch, he'll shoot us! Looks like we're at something of a standoff here, Mr. Tannen. I don't see a way out, unless somebody manages to disarm mm. both of you at the same time. Hint, How hint. How am I supposed to do that? Um... In the scoreboard? Uh, what's that supposed to do? Was that a mouse? What's the matter, Miss Pickford? Scared of a little mouse? No, but you should be scared. Mice carry diseases. It's a fact. Look, Look it, up. it up. Okay, can I go this way? Pickle barrels. Why are you dressed like that? Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. I wonder what's in these. Oh, stop quiet! God. What the hell? Oh, cow crap! There goes all my pickled pig's feet! Can I get on this thing? Pickle juice. That yeah. ought to be handy for putting out torches. Climb the thing up? It's too heavy to lift. What's back here? Sandbag. Man, this thing is not light. Oh, ladder. I'm sorry, folks. It's getting late. It's Mary Pickford. past my bedtime. Don't tell me that you're not traveling through time under a pseudonym, Mr. Carl Sagan. Quit yammering, you two. Nothing worse than a chatty standoff. It's right over his head. But I can't knock him out while Edna's still holding that torch. No, no, I, I, I don't blame you. And the third one? Going down. Looks like your torch is getting a little dim there, Miss Pickford. It's still hot wow. enough to bring They're down doing a good job downstairs by not doing much. Say, that's a lovely chandelier you've got there. <sighs> All right, physics. Okay. Now that's up there, right? Yep. So go back up. Now I want to go this way. Can I go that way? Um, Are you here to haul me back to 1931 for my supposed crimes? Or is there some sort of time court for that kind of thing? Time court? What in the name of Ulysses S. Grant is she talking? I can't reach it. Even if I could knock it down, Edna be free to torch the place. No, I know, I know, I know. Well, there's a sandbag over Tannen's head. I wonder if I can get something over Edna's torch. Yeah, I know. I want to get the pickle juice or pickle juice thing there. I'm just trying to figure out. How Why are you so hell by determined to meddle in my affairs, woman? You've been a burr in my behind for over a month now. You're the source of the hellfire around here, Tannen. So now if I hit the loose floorboard... Okay. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm gonna go back up the ladder. See if I can see something. Rope. 
What's that? Just lie down. Oh. Now, what was that noise? step on loose what floorboard. Noise? I didn't hear a noise. Ladder. A hundred years from now, Hill Valley. Okay, that was lucky. Won't be long now. We'll just see. Okay, so now am I supposed to go back up there and jump on the chandelier? I don't know. Come on. Maybe we... The ammo's in place. Now to pull the trigger. That pickle juice will put the torch out for sure. Now to tip the barrel over. Come on. Got any last words? I'll see you in hell, Tannen. You first, lady. Come on, you son of a... I love it. 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 you? I'm the diversion, butthead. Well. Nice one, Doc. Don't tell Clara. She thinks Fistikov set a bad example for the boys. Now, where's Edna? Doc, she's gone. Edna's DeLorean. We gotta stop her before she hits me more forward. Come on. Wow. There's a lot to do in this game. Or this chapter, anyway. Okay, Anna, nothing to be worried about. You're a smart woman with a strong moral compass. You just need to think your way out of it. Oh, fudge! Oh, fudge! Well, what's she doing? I think she's spouting euphemisms at us. Luckily, the road out of Hill Valley is still pretty rough in 1875. It's unlikely she'll manage to accelerate to 88 miles an hour anytime soon. Okay. How are we going to stop her? Good question. We can't risk injuring her or damaging the vehicle for fear of altering the timeline even further. Luckily, those diagnostic lights my alternate self put all over the glory and have given me an idea. Here, take these. What are these? Flux signalization. How do they work? I generally use them for maintenance purposes. We might be able to use them to sync up with the alternate glory's diagnostic modules, thus making it possible to link both sets of time circuits and override the time destination of the alternate glory. At least that's the theory, anyway. Okay. That's a great plan, I think. Best of all, we won't need to weld the modules to the frame. We just snap them over the diagnostic lights. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to go out there? How the heck am I supposed to do that? Question. Let me Aha! Hoverboard! 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 Atel. It says Atel instead of Mattel. Sweet! You okay? It's just like riding a bike. They forgot the uh, straps. The straps that hook up your feet. Nice war party. Now to reception of the wireless. This is great. Where'd you get these? The first cache of 21st century video game consoles. Now remember, all you've got to do is attach the fluxing modules to those diagnostic lights. Will do, Doc. Okay. Stop that and escape. So there's a flux emitter right there. I see one right there too. I think I'm gonna do the front first. Is this the starboard flux emitter? Yes. Now plug in the flux sink. Oh, all right. 
nicely done. Now, aim the sink toward the receiving dish. I'll try, but it's getting a little bumpy out here. Constantly moves on its own. Nice. Oh, she saw me. Great, that's one block sink down. Two to go. Okay, rear bumper. Driver's side. Right there in it, yep. Get off! How am I gonna do it? Am I gonna have to go through the front? Oh, game, you are a cruel, cruel mistress. Okay. Front bumper. It's that easy. It's locked. Um. Fuck. Don't cross those flames. They may be radioactive. I don't even like crossing through normal flames. Wow. Front bumper. What's windshield wiper gonna do? Oh, can I reach up and close that with that? Nice. I'm a genius. I'm a fucking genius. Now, if only I figure out how to do this. She can't see me here? She's been making it easy up till now. Well, here goes nothing, Doc. Whoa! Perfect! Now, aim the fuck thing towards the receiving dish on my DeLorean. Receiving dish, receiving dish. Uh, check! Wow. It's like you set it there and it, it drifts off. You gotta move back, it drifts off. It's like keeping it steady is... Oh, shit. Not the simplest thing in the world. We're almost home, Marty. Just one fuck thing left. Get up my car, you hooligan! Emitters. I can't reach that. Well, I knew I couldn't reach it from the other side, but... I can't reach it from here. Go to the rear bumper, try from the back. I got that, I got fusion right there. Mr. Fusion, did I disable it? Leave it alone. It's not a good idea about keeping the nuclear reactors. Yeah, he's got a point there. Um. 
bumper. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, Marty. I'm okay. I'm okay. No, I don't want front bumper. I want... She's got her window rolled down. Can I, like, step in there quick to hop up on top of the car? It's locked. Front bumper. to talk to her. Edna, what? Let me in. You want in? Fine. Ah. Marty, are you all right? Um, not really. the way I planned it, but... Upside down. Nice. It took long enough. Oh shit. Now what? Get in. Now we take control of Edward's door and with the flux in the car just happened. That's strange. What? According to these readings, the temporal cohesion of Edward's door and is decaying. I don't know what in great English, Doc. We've got to get Edna home. Now! Let's do it then. You're gonna be someone's girlfriend. Harker? Then I must be back in... Would you be kind enough to tell me what day it is? It's the day I place you under arrest for arson, resisting arrest, and being a general all-round pain in the what? ass. No! You can't arrest it. me! Not now, I just got back from the last century. Would you look at that? Edna Strickland, drunk as a skunk. I'm not drunk, you reprobate. I'm a time traveler. Sure you are. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> I'll bring it to you. Come with me. We can do the whole day over if you want. We can fix everything. We can start by drying you out. Come on, into the station with you. You can bunk with me, doll. I'd rather die. Wow. Stop it. Unhand me, you dolt. Well, I guess that's it for Edna. Yes, I suppose it is. You know, whoever said time heals all wounds didn't know squat about time travel. What do we do about that, DeLorean? No need to do a thing. 
Ever since we synced up the time circuits, the temporal breakdown in Edna's DeLorean has accelerated at an exponential rate. By my calculations, the timeline should catch up with it in five, four, three, two, one, now! What the hell? Hey, Parker, you're not gonna believe this! See? what I say? Ready to go home? Wait, Doc, the timeline's not fixed yet. Look! Michael! You missed all the fireworks at the expo! Yeah, so I heard. Listen, I heard a rumor about you two. I guess we gotta come clean. Ta-da! Hardy took me to Reno last night! Try to keep a secret in Hill Valley. <laughs> well, you're gonna congratulate us or what? Then it's true. My grandpa's married the wrong grandma. I'm done for. Hey, are you feeling all right, kid? You don't look so hot. Um... She's wrong. Trixie, you can't marry Artie. Is this about my past with Kid? Cause Artie ain't holding that against me. That's right, darling. The past is the past. Yeah, but... This just isn't right. Now I know marrying a Canadian for a work permit isn't strictly by the book, but pay. Sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love. <sighs> Isn't he just the sweetest? Isn't he just? Can you see through me? Nope. Never could figure you out. I thought you'd be thrilled for us. You don't understand. You're supposed to marry Sylvia Miskin. But I did marry Sylvia Miskin. What? You didn't think my I knew it. name was Trixie Trotter, did ya? Don't feel too bad. It was kind of a surprise to me, too. Well, I won't say when I knew it. I just, your grandma, I Sylvie? Grandma. I had on. Hey, how old do you think I am, kiddo? Uh, but you're so, so skinny and blonde and... Huh. Yeah, you know, I think... Oh, oh, my God. You I've seen you naked. <laughs> Sylvia? Huh. You okay, pal? Yeah, I'm fine. Great. You kids go off and have yourself a wonderful honeymoon. And don't worry about your dad, Artie. I'm sure he'll come around. Come around to what? Um, to approving your marriage. You seem kind of mad about it back at the high school. Well, that was before I got a look at her. Besides, as my dear old father Seamus used to say, no sense in getting riled up over something I can't do nothing about. And honestly, now that I met her, I can't imagine a better daughter-in-law than the charming Miss Sylvie here. Aww. Thank you, Dad. As for you, stranger, I'll thank you to not go poking your nose in McFly family business. It's been a pleasure, Agent Corleone. See you in the funny papers, Mikey. Goodbye, Grandma. You know, I took some pictures of Trixie in 1931. Hey, that's my grandma you're talking about. <laughs> Back in 1986? Good old 1986. Ah, oh, May 14th. 15th. Best to build in a little lag time. Gives you a chance to catch up. <sighs> Looks like the estate sale is still going on. Hey, don't you want to stay, Doc? You gotta stop the bank from selling off all your old stuff. What are you talking about? Estate sale? Bank? I'm not dead, Marty. Clara and I are having a little garage sale, that's all. Garage sale? You mean... Marty, you're back from your trip. Hello, Doc. Selling off the family treasures, eh? Uh, not quite, but I hope you find something you like. Speaking of which, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> Great! Hey, is that a box of Asimov? Let me get this straight. Are you telling me you live here now? In 1986? Well, naturally. Claire and I maintain a part-time residence here. Wasn't that the case when you left? No. Strange. I can't imagine not sticking around. 
After all, I've got my late father's foundation to supervise. If I wasn't here, who'd present the annual Earhart Brown Scholarship for young scientists? <laughs> Something nice. funny? I'll explain it to you later. I don't see what's so funny about looking out for a family legacy. Oh, almost forgot. I've got something for you. Happy graduation. Graduation? But that's not for another... The McFlies of Hill Valley. An exhaustively detailed history of your family. From your great-great-grandfather Seamus to the present. You traveled through time to write this? Well, most of the research was done traditionally, but your grandma Sylvia proved to be something of a mystery. Which is why you traveled back to 1931 to look for her. Exactly. Well, okay. Who knew she was singing in a speakeasy on her stage name? This is great, Doc. Thanks. Uh, it's the least I could do for the man who saved me from making the worst mistake of my life. Yoo-hoo! Dr. Brown! Wow. Edna? Einie. What's going on? What are you doing with my door? The same thing I do every afternoon, silly man. Giving him such much needed exercise. Isn't that right, Einie? Wow. Hey, dollface, it's past time for our 3.30. Coming, sweetie. Oh, Mr. McFly, have you seen my stepson anywhere? Oh, Biff, I think you're late wow. for an appointment. Oh, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> you're right, Mr. McFly. Hi, Marty. She Don't hooked they up with make a cannon. great little family. You'd never know they met in prison. Don't say anything. Let's just walk quietly into the lab and hope there are no more surprises. Yes, that's a good idea. Holy shit. Ah, 1646. The fuck? Doc! Marty! What are you doing here? You gotta come with me! Back to the future! Marty, you can't be here! If your younger well, self okay. sees you, the consequences could be catastrophic. My younger self? Oh, right. Bring him along too. This concerns all of us. What do you mean? Does something happen to us? To become we assholes, assholes, for something? assholes for something? I love it. Yeah, we're fine. But our great great grandkids? What the hell? Great Scott. A blue one? Doc, you gotta come back with me. Back Don't to listen the... to him, Doc. It's me you gotta help. If you want to save Jennifer and our 12 kids... What? That timeline was overwritten five jumps back. Doc, Jennifer's how picture. can there be two more of me here? I have no idea. My old rates of space-time continuum should be tearing apart like a cheap dish rack right now. It already is. What my evil twin and I are trying to say is the future is totally jacked up. And you gotta come with me to save it. No, me! So, we meet at last. You've altered my timeline once too often. What's going on, Doc? Well, we do see There's some next level shit going on here. Three. Yeah, Doc, but which one is the real me? Isn't it obvious, Marty? Come on. Prepare to be erased. Doc, wait! What about the space-time continuum? Yeah, what about my future? And mine? The future can wait. We've got a present to catch up with. Wow. Where to, Doc? Mr. McFly, thrill me. Mr. McFly, thrill me. Copyright claim for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I love the song. That's an interesting ending. That's an interesting ending. I was not expecting that. 
Um, I honestly don't know what I was expecting. I kind of figured they would walk into it and that would be the end of it and that'd be the end of the story. And it's like, that's a... I don't know. I don't know. I was reading somewhere that uh, Telltale Games might be working on a sequel to this game. So, uh, I mean, I know nothing about it. If they, if it's still in development or not, I, I have no idea. But uh, you better believe when it comes out, I'm going to be hopping right on board for that one. But uh, this was fun. I had a lot of fun playing this. Uh, there's, there are some things about it where it seems uh, impractical. Um, like I don't time breakdown. Uh, like for instance. Uh, Honestly, when I split up, um, when I split up uh, Edna and uh, Emmett, you would think that uh, older Emmett would have already changed. Uh, Maybe I'm not. I'm just not making myself clear. The thing is, it's it's really late tonight. I have uh, I have a couple things I wanted to say about this game, but the thing is, a few things I could say would take us a little bit farther into the night, and uh, it's really late, and I'm really tired. Um, this episode really ran longer than uh, um, the previous ones, I believe. Um, so far in time it has, but I've had it stop a little bit because I had laundry to do and a couple other things to do, but... Um, I think I'm just going to leave the rest of this uh, for comments. Um, if you guys are willing to leave me comments, um, I will be willing to answer them. I, I try to answer every comment. Um, which is easy right now because I really don't get any. Uh, now, granted, um, this game, I'm just finishing this game now, and I haven't even uploaded the first episode yet, uh, which it should be out, uh, Sunday after next. As of recording this one, uh, tomorrow, um, The Walking Dead Michonne Episode 2 is coming out. So it's letting you know about how far I am a little bit with uh, my games. Um, I'd like to be ahead because I know I'm going to have a week where I'm not going to be able to get any recording done. So I like to make sure I'm ahead of the game a little bit. So that if I have a week where I can't record, um, I, can at least be I can at least be okay with videos. To be continued. Nice. No preview. I'm just seeing if there's anything else at the end. Nope, right back to the menu. Okay, well that's going to do it for this episode, folks. Uh, thank you for sticking with me on this journey. The thing about my Sunday games is I don't really talk much. Um, it's more about, that's, I usually save the story games for Sunday, so we have a long video on Sunday, and then, you know, that, if you're, if you're frequent on my channel, I think you get by now how things work, but, uh, that's the end of Back to the Future of the Game, I hope you liked it, if you do, you know what to do with the buttons, I'm, I'm not gonna beg, I, I don't beg, but, uh, I will see you all in the next one, what game will that be? We have but to find out. Keep your eyes open. The bird!